Hey, welcome back to the wood shop. Or not. Wannabe wood shop. Uh, this is part three on the small sign bars. And in the last episode we finished the sign bars by, them by themselves. And in this episode I got wood. Um, we are going to make wooden boxes for these uh, sign bars. I have two pieces. These, this is um, oak. I think it's oak. It's hardwood. Um, this is uh, pre-cut and pre-milled stuff from the uh, big box store. Kind of rough milled, but good enough for what we're going to do. And I have a thin section with about 10 millimeters in thickness, which will form the lid. And I have this bigger piece with 20 millimeters, which has a nice bow to it. Um, which doesn't matter because we're cutting it up in pieces that short. Um, for, and this bigger piece is, is the, will be the body of the box. And the box themselves will be about this size. With the shape of the sign bar milled out or machined out. We'll, I might do that on the pentagraph machine because I can set up a template and cut them to shape. Maybe add some finger grooves. And I have some hardware, some El Cheapo hinges and um, box hardware, some some clo lit, some closing hardware, and these cheapo brass hinges to make a box. Okay, let's take an actual measurement. We'll make them 100 millimeters long. So take our square. Bring this up over the Y so the square works. Like this. Take our cheap Japanese pull saw and cut it cut it down. Okay, there we go. That's all the wood for the boxes. Now we will uh, machine the ends square and also machine them to length. Okay, I just stacked up the parts for the lid in the Y's and side milled them to length all at once. And as you can see by the chips, these look almost like small planar shavings. Um, and this is a three flute high speed steel cutter for aluminum with the high helix and this gives a very nice cut. The bodies which are a bit thicker and, I, and a bit harder to clamp up all at once I'm going to do one by one against the stop. There we go. And wood 
it creates always a bit of a burr. You can deburr it with a razor blade. The, no <laughs> the Noga deburring tool doesn't work very well on wood. Uh, a woodworker might use sandpaper. I'm just realizing that I might offend everybody who's working with wood with this video, <laughs> but I'm fine with that. And we got 98.06. And I'm going to machine them all, of course, to 98 because I cut them too short. That's why you have to clamp your wood tight. So this is 500 RPM and you saw that we still get a, a real chip and not only dust. And that means that you can machine wood without 30,000 RPM from a router. If you have a sharp tool. That's also the reason why a hand plane works. Another one. Again, checking my dimensions, 98.04, good enough. Just saw me hogging out the cavity for the um, sign bar into the body of the of the box. I'm using a six mm one flute carbide end mill, which cuts pretty aggressive, and it's uh, yeah, it's 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 really cutting nice. Look at the chips this thing produces. I rigged up my shop whack to keep the chips somewhat in. Uh, in the closer area around the machine, but it's hopeless. <laughs> but at least it um, reduces the fine dust that goes everywhere to a minimum. Okay, we have the wood boxes with the cutout for a sign bar, but there is a problem. We can't get the sign bars out without flipping the box over. And a lot of people forget this when they make wooden boxes for tooling. And um, you need some cutouts for the fingers to grab the part. And they look especially nice when you use a nice uh, ball end mill. This is a 12mm 4 flute carbide ball end mill. And I'm going to cut uh, a notch in the end of this pocket for the fingers.
taking off the burr works pretty good with a sharp blade. Just get across the surface and get the, the fuzz removed. And open the vise, flip it around, up against the stop. And do it again. And again, removing the burr with a sharp blade. The nice thing, um, I was running this animal at 1000 RPM, and at that low speed, it doesn't throw dust around all, all over the shop like a router would. Okay. Right now, I'm cutting the um, how do woodworkers call it? A mortise. For the hinges, I have the um, the body of the box and the lid clamped up together in the vise and I laid out the mortise for the hinges and I'm just cutting the material with the engraving machine with a square template. And I'm aligning it by the layout line. Okay, a woodworker might do this with a router and a template, but uh, being a machinist and having a pantograph machine, of course I'm using that. Okay, off camera I put on the hinges. You saw me just um, taking out the corners of the mortise for the hinges with a chisel and then I pre-drilled the screw holes for the small brass screws. The small brass screws are by the way a pain in the butt. Um, they strip out so easy it's a nightmare. Um, I get it all together and then I put three layers of shellac on it. I, I sanded it to 120, first layer of shellac. Um, sanded it again to 240, another layer of shellac. And now this is the final uh, coat of shellac which I just wiped on with a rag, not with a brush. And this should give me a, a nice smooth surface. This one is almost dry and you can see that it has a bit of a shine. And judging by the look of an older Mitutoyo um, box, this is also shellac. I'm pretty sure. Feels like it, looks like it. And it dissolves with alcohol, so... Should be. And I'm not setting, I'm not uh, doing my own shellac mix, I'm using the 
the ready available mix, which works quite good for me. Okay, I fudged the hardware, the remaining hardware, onto the boxes with tiny brass screws, which are still a pain. And I have the sign bars in the boxes and everything fits up quite nice and they're ready to leave the shop. I will keep one and the others will go to the... So, hope you enjoyed the series of tool making. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.